Hey, what's going on YouTube to another video on Ableton Live topics and I'm really excited to do this video today because it's about Ableton Live shortcuts and that's obviously a feature or a topic that people ask a lot about because Ableton Live has more of a customizability uh, kind of uh, philosophy about keyboard shortcuts and it's really useful to optimize the way you use Ableton Live and I want to show you today my choices, how I do it. Uh, so first of all, right off the bat, if we go to key right here in the top right corner and hit that, you're going to notice your screen becomes uh, highlighted with orange. And this is basically showing you all the things that you can customize for yourself. So this is a huge deal right off the bat for a lot of people. Um, a lot of features here, I like to use really practical, intuitive keystrokes. So what I do we look here on the left tap i can do my tap tempo with t on my keyboard i can enable my metronome with m so that's really useful right so if i'm in a session i can just tap that and i have m my metronome enabled uh, if we go over here you can see i have the play button blank because i can just use the space key space key is really good for you know stopping and starting again um, but i also then have s for stop and the reason why i do this is because as my session is playing, I can hit S to stop where I am. If I hit S again, it reverts the playhead back to the beginning. So that's really, really useful. Uh, if you're in a session where you're all the way to the right, some people might have trouble uh, zooming and getting back to the very beginning of their session. This just, in one keystroke, I'm back to the beginning. Uh, so time saving is really the key here. R for record. Again, you don't have to reach for the mouse when you're recording maybe with a guitar or a keyboard. You can just quickly tap the R key on your keyboard and you're ready to go. Um, and also some interesting things here, like this is MIDI overdub, this plus sign here. A lot of people don't know about this, especially if you're coming from Logic, uh, where if you are recording a piano or a synthesizer part and you want to do the chords first and then record the melody on top of it, you don't have to over or you don't have to erase uh, your MIDI and copy and paste the notes onto one clip. You can just have this enabled. Uh, for me, I use O to turn it on and I can record the chords and then the melody. You don't have to be a virtuoso piano player <laughs> to use your keyboards uh, using this feature. You can do one hand at a time. Uh, another great, great feature. If I go over here, I have lowercase a, which is going to enable me to record manual changes to automation, uh, which is really useful for a lot of effects. I might do a sim uh, another video altogether about that. Oh, here's a big one. Lowercase l for loop. So this turns on loop region in Ableton Live. And of course you can customize it as you will, but I could turn it off and on with L. If I highlight on the screen and click Control L on Windows or Command L on Mac, now I'm making a loop region based on my highlight. And I can obviously turn it off and on really easily. Again, huge time sa saver. I'm not reaching for the mouse constantly um, and trying to go back up here to the top of the screen. So that saves a lot of time. And you can see here that there's a lot of other orange spots that I don't customize, but you certainly can. Um, a lot of what I do is in arrangement screen. So obviously in Ableton Live, you have the live screen and there's spots all over there that are highlighted. You can customize as you will. So you can get really creative with this. And as we kind of go further along, what I tend to do is I have audio tracks as my default when I open up a session. And what I like to do here is I do something interesting with set markers. So set markers essentially allow you to click spots in your session. And this can come in handy for so many reasons, guys. I mean, like, let's say you just want to mark your verses and choruses. Obviously that works, but also maybe you want to mark a specific spot where the song ends and you're planning on bouncing from. So you have your end or you want to mark where you're going to have your pre-roll before you bounce the audio once you have a finished track, all these things that you might want to do, especially if you're sending a mix off to a mastering engineer and you want to give them pre-roll and post-roll, stuff like that. These come in handy so much. And what I do is I use Shift N. So Shift N is going to help me to make as many of these as I need to. Um, and what's amazing about that is that, let's say I go to lowercase n right below there. So I'll delete it so you can see. It's just the right marker. And this allows me to scan with lowercase n through all of those regions, right? So when I'm stopped, I can quickly jump from verse one to chorus one really easily. 
Maybe I'm auditioning stuff for an artist I have behind me. That's great. If I'm playing, it's going to trigger to those spots on the downbeat. I can quickly cycle through my track as I'm going through the mixing stage. Maybe I want to check, make sure my automation and my volumes is good enough and all that kind of stuff. Super easy. And if I go through here, I just hit delete. I'm just deleting all those and get rid of them instantly if I need to. So another big time saver, really, really practical stuff for your workflow in Ableton Live. And one of my last ones, and this is an interesting one, is you'll notice these little lowercase Vs set on my default for audio tracks. And I have this on my default uh, template. So what is this doing? This, uh, this is basically me bringing all of my levels down because if you've probably noticed when you use sample packs or basically anything that you're not recording yourself, everything is basically limited. Everything's limited to zero. So it's essentially too loud. I mean, how many times have you been in Ableton Live in a session and you, you know, record two or three instruments uh, or bring in, you know, drum samples and immediately your master fader is going red. It's because all the samples are, are they're limited. So your session is immediately too hot. Right. And you don't want to be clipping going into your master bus. That's a big no, no. Uh, but the default, you know, when you pull up a default audio track in Ableton, you have zero. I mean, that's OK. So if I just, you know, I'm in a session that I open up and I'm going to bring in drums, I'm going to have everything at negative 10. And if I click on this and hit it again, I can also drop down to negative 15. So this is like me doing a hack for my headroom. If I want to have control over my gain staging and make it much more instantaneous, I can just hit V and I've got a negative 10 or a negative 15 decibel pad, just like that. And then if I bring in a new track, obviously default's gonna be zero. It doesn't carry over that shortcut to this fader. You can customize it further too if you want to. But then what I do is I can just bring everything down and just bring it up in the mix. So as I'm mixing, I can kind of uh, bring things in. I'm gonna bring in my synth pad or my background vocals or whatever it is. I just kind of quickly mix it in from the bottom like that and everything's level. So really, really useful stuff for your Ableton Live workflow. And of course, you can customize things as you go along. Go to File and Save Live Set as Default Set. So if you go and create a new session file, uh, these things are going to uh, not carry over. So it's all customized based on the session. So if you want this uh, from now on, you know, you want to customize uh, your, your workflow there, make sure you save this as a live uh, default set. And, uh, I think that's basically all the ones that I use. Oh, one thing I missed here, uh, the draw tool. So if you like to draw in drums and melodies and chords on the piano roll with the, with the, uh, computer mouse, right? Uh, you don't have to scan, like bring the mouse all the way up here to enable this over and over again. Uh, just set it as lowercase d. So now my draw tool is immediately available and I can toggle it on and off just like that. I don't have to grab the mouse and reach for it. Um, so yeah, all these things really come in handy for saving a lot of time. If you have any questions about this or want to add on some other suggestions, put them in the comments below. Make sure to hit the like button and subscribe if you're an Ableton Live user and this is useful for you. And yeah, we do a lot of music production topics on this channel. So make sure to hit the subscribe button. I'll see you on the next video. Have fun making music.